this one. Over here. And we can have you guys come, come in tighter here. All right. And then you want you want to come? we're going to have this you in way. order. So AC to mm -hmm. this over here. Yeah. And then we'll just move this way as we go. Okay. Okay. And would you like me to put your notes down below? Sure. You can just grab it. Would you like your notes down below? That's a good order. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Tina Jones. I'm a lieutenant with the Portland Police Bureau and the Public Information Officer. We are gathered here today to share some very exciting news about an educational opportunity for our faith-based community members this coming weekend. Today we have representatives from the United States Attorney General's Office, the FBI, the Portland Police Bureau, the Washington County Sheriff's Office, and the One Cop organization to share the details of this event. First, I would like to introduce to you the first assistant U.S. Attorney, Scott Osbog. Thank you, Thank you Tina. sir. Good afternoon. My name is Scott Ospog. I'm the first assistant United States Attorney for Oregon. For Americans, the free exercise of religion is a cherished right. Indeed, our founders believed that it was so integral to our country's identity that's included in the United States Constitution. All Americans, regardless of their belief, should feel safe when entering houses of worship and free to practice their religion without fear of violence. Unfortunately, we've seen too many acts of violence against faith communities across the country. Law enforcement agencies work tirelessly to protect houses of worship and mitigate threats before they can escalate to violence. But we need your help. Community members and congregations are our eyes and ears because you know your neighbors and you know your congregants. The Portland metropolitan area is a welcoming and diverse community, but it is not unlike Charleston or Pittsburgh or Oak Creek or Poway. And that's why it's so important that we remain vigilant and diligent to, and reconfirm our commitment to preparedness. And so today, my colleagues and I offer an appeal to faith leaders across the metropolitan area. Join us for this training. Join us to take an important step for preparing your congregation for a tragedy we all pray will never happen. U.S. Attorney Bill Williams will welcome you in person for coming. We all appreciate the constraints that each of you have for your, on your time, but know that this training will be an invaluable tool for all participants. Finally, on behalf of the United States Attorney's Office and U.S. Attorney Williams, I want to thank Reverend Markel Hutchins, the One Cop Initiative, and each of my distinguished colleagues for the work in bringing this important training to our community. <coughs> We also thank Congregation Neva Shalom for opening its doors to the community and hosting Sunday's training. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to introduce to you FBI Special Agent in Charge, Ren Cannon. Thanks, Tina. All right, well, I will echo some of the, the points and I'll be brief. So as uh, Tina said, my name is Ren Cannon. And I'm the special agent in charge of the Portland Division of the FBI, which covers the state of Oregon. As many of you know, the FBI's mission is to protect the American people and to uphold the Constitution. Here in Oregon, that means ensuring that every person can live, work, and worship with, uh, freely and without fear. So that kind of public safety is a team sport. It, no one agency can achieve that kind of public safety and security by itself. All the law enforcement agencies have to work together as a team, but it takes more than just the law enforcement community. It takes teamwork between the community at large and law enforcement agencies. So this Sunday, I'm pleased to support and we're pleased to participate in the training that will take place that Scott mentioned. The, uh, the opportunity to jointly provide expertise from different agencies um, and to build relationships with the community, I think, is invaluable. The, um, we have some materials that we'll hand out um, that will give you an idea of some of the uh, presentations that will be presented. 
But uh, the FBI's piece of this will have to do with prevention of violence, making prevention a reality, with the research on behaviors indicative of the pathway to violence, and also on concrete steps that can be taken um, to help establish security for houses of worship. Uh, in closing, I'd like to um, thank Reverend Hutchins for bringing this national initiative to Portland. I think it's very important what he is doing nationwide, and we're privileged to have it here. <coughs> I'd like to thank uh, Chief Outlaw for her leadership and the leadership from the Portland Police Bureau for bringing this initiative to Portland and leading the way on this training on Sunday. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Tina. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Portland Police Bureau's Assistant Chief, Chris Davis. Well, good afternoon. Uh, as Tina said, I'm Assistant Chief Chris Davis of the Operations Branch here in the Police Bureau, and I'm here on behalf of Chief Outlaw today. She's out of town attending some training on the East Coast. Uh, thank you for coming today to learn some more about Sunday's event. You know, it's an unfortunate reality in today's world that people who should feel safe and comforted in their respective houses of worship feel unsettled and insecure as a result of some of the events that we've seen around the world. We're all shocked and saddened by some of the horrific acts of violence we've seen in some of our most sacred spaces. While there are no known threats here in the Portland area, it is critical for our community's faith leaders, their congregations, and security teams to be prepared and mindful of today's realities. The police officers who will be conducting this program are well versed in this area and they'll impart their knowledge and national best practices around safety and security at houses of worship. Our hope is that in addition to providing this information, we'll also be building better relationships and rapport with our faith communities because we rely on them as community policing partners. This project will also provide knowledge to our community about how to respond in a crisis. This empowers people and it pushes back against the fear that some want to impose on our diverse faith, faith communities and that has no place in our houses of worship. We're proud to be a part of this collaborative process with our law enforcement partners, both local and federal, federal that is, and we're very appreciative to the pastor and the One Cop Initiative. Uh, this initiative strives to bring the police and the faith community together and this partnership is, is invaluable. So it's important for all our community members to feel safe and secure, exercising their freedom to worship freely and without fear. So thank you again for coming today. Now it is my distinct honor to introduce to you Reverend Markel Hutchins from the One Cop Initiative. Reverend. Good afternoon. I can assure you that I'm Baptist and I will not be as succinct as they were. Uh, I want to start off first by saying thank you to the public affairs team, uh, both at the FBI, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and certainly the Portland Police Bureau for their work in gathering the media here today. Uh, we, we want this community to be clear that it is better for us to be proactive and prepared than mourn and regretful because we didn't prepare. When we launched the One Cop Initiative here in Portland, in January, we made a commitment to the faith-based community and to the Portland Police Bureau that we would do everything we could uh, to exercise the knowledge and utilize the perspectives that we've gotten since we started the One Cop Initiative. There's nothing more important to faith-based organizations in this hour and in this era than to protect their worshipers during their regular services. Uh, unfortunately, we live in an environment where uh, those who uh, intend to inflict harm often see large public gatherings, including Sunday and Saturday services, as a vulnerable target uh, that when attacked can wreak havoc on a mass of people and at the same time garner those attackers a uh, great deal of media attention. So in this hour, we must not wait until a situation unfolds or until uh, Chief, we have some credible threats. We've got to prepare now, and that's why uh, several weeks ago, and it hasn't been very long, I called uh, Ren Cannon, who joined us when we launched the One Cop Initiative, and said that uh, I knew that the FBI had a great deal of resources uh, to, to address this subject matter of active shooters and the emergency preparedness, and we wanted to gather uh, the sum total of the faith community across race and religion, 
So on Sunday, we expect faith leaders and faith communities from every walk of life to come together to get this training. It is specifically tailored for faith communities and their security departments. There is no cost for the training. We just ask that the faith leaders come and get the lessons and the information and perspective that will be offered. And we are so thankful and grateful for Chief Outlaw and the leadership that she has shown to this department and to this community. I'm also very thankful and honored that the Sheriff's offices in Multnomah County, Washington, and Clackamas County are all coordinating with us, as is the Oregon State Police. Oftentimes, um, when houses of worship get this sort of training, they get it uh, from one agency without the benefit of the heft that comes when you have a multi-agency collaboration like this one. So again, uh, we want every house of worship in this community to be prepared uh, so that we don't have to have another Charleston or Poway or anywhere else. We don't want Portland to, need to be the next Poway or Charleston or Pittsburgh. We want Portland to be prepared, and in doing so, we will, we will make our congregants safer, we'll make our communities safer, and I'm just so delighted and thankful to our law enforcement partners for, for their collaboration on this. Now, I'll take any easy questions. Tina will take all the hard questions, and then I'll take the offering. No, I'm just joking. Any, you guys have any questions? Have you guys had um, faith leaders reach out prior to this um, with questions around security um, with the different agencies? Um, how did this all? So when, when we launched the One Cop Initiative in January, we had uh, how many houses of worship, David? Is David in here? It was well over 100 houses of worship that are partnered together and working collaboratively with their officers. And after the shooting happened in Poway, uh, my office and, and, and our national office of the One Cop Initiative started to get some inquiries from uh, houses of worship here wanting to know what it was they could do to get the sort of training that we're going to offer on Sunday. And I think a lot of that was in the aftermath of the shooting at the Poway uh, Synagogue. So we, we did get the kind of outreach, and that's what kind of caused us to reach out to our partners in law enforcement to offer the training. <laughs> yes. I'm wondering if uh, TPC and the other law enforcement agencies um, are doing anything to kind of reach out to religious minorities who, for historical reasons, might be uh, reluctant to work with the police and, and making sure that they'll also be there this weekend. So I know um, the Reverend and his team have reached out. To, I don't know the latest number, but I think it was over 800 yes. um, participants. And then through our um, community engagement officer program and the chief's office, we've been reaching out to a variety of different um, faith-based organizations. And one of our big goals has been to try and reach out to as many as we can um, so that there's a good representative sample, knowing that you know, sometimes people haven't had this opportunity in, in a lot of different areas. I will say to um, tag on to what the Reverend said as well, we in Portland we have had inquiries or um, interest in this sort of training before and we've done it on a much smaller scale to individual congregations, but nothing um, that meets this big of a collaboration and, and with the amount of people that we can have. So this is very exciting for all of us to be here to do. Now our, our, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because I should have mentioned this before. So the uh, Ecumenical Ministries of Oregon, which is one of the largest and most influential faith-based uh, collaboratives in Portland, is partnering with us as a co-host, as is the Jewish Federation of Portland. Uh, and, and my office has directly reached out to both via email, letter, and telephone more than 800 congregations across the greater Portland area from every walk of life. Um, the, the, the Muslim, the uh, Jewish, the Hindu, the Buddhist, uh, as well as the Christian communities. So there, there's been a lot of comprehensive outreach, but a part of why we knew that it was needed to have this conversation today and to hold a press conference is because it really is just impossible to reach every faith-based organization to alert them of this opportunity, and we didn't want to exclude anyone. We want folks to know that this is a training that law enforcement is offering to every house of worship and every community.
in this moment where there's so much division and so much tension around police community engagement, we're focused on working around our commonalities. There's a lot of things that some of these houses of worship may disagree with Portland or the, the Portland Police Bureau, the FBI, or some other law enforcement agency, but we all agree on this subject matter, that people that come to worship uh, during their weekly worship services deserve to be protected and they deserve to feel safe in that space. So working around that commonality is what we're focused on. And frankly, I found that if you start with your commonalities, your differences will become less and less. This whole one cop focus is on drawing police and communities together to work around, again, their commonalities in a unified way. Yes, sir. Um, what kind of activities do you describe what exactly people are going to be doing? Um, I will yield to uh, Special Agent Cannon. Yeah, sure. I'll take that one. So, really, the, the Portland Police Bureau has been conducting training, as was mentioned, with different houses of worship. So, we're building on that training. That training is very consistent with national best practices. So, the Portland Police Bureau will be in the lead. They've, they've done tremendous things, I think, already in the community. We're building on the foundation that they've already laid. What the FBI will bring to that. So, there, there will be specific information as to how to respond in the event that an active shooter um, comes into a, a community. There will also be information about uh, steps that can be taken to secure the, the houses of worship in advance, and then we will present from the FBI some information uh, about products that are available. Like I mentioned, some of those are available to you today. You can take some of those with you. There's a CD with the information on it and hard copies as well, <clears throat> and also some information about the pathways to violence. What should you be concerned about? Yeah. Does that answer the question? Okay. Thank you. Uh, you know, we're all here at Presses here, most of us at least, and uh, are we invited to take part in all aspects on Sunday, or are we not allowed into those, uh, I guess, conferences, if you will? Yes, you can. Um, the press is welcome to come. I know that um, Kevin and I will be there to assist. Um, you know, we the focus of this is on the participants, and so you know we'll work <coughs> with you so that you can get what you need to report on this um, and allow for us to provide the training. But we will be there. So, in, in closing, if if there's nothing else, uh, in closing, I, I, I yep, yeah, yes, sir. I, I <coughs> well, um, since January, when you uh, instituted the one cop, has there been any uh, incidents? in the Portland area that um, has been, uh, that you've had to communicate with houses of worship or give them any kind of alerts or provide any services? I can't think of any no. Not that we're aware of, and we don't want it to be. Uh, again, you know, this, this is uh, about being um, not alarmist, but being prepared and being wise and prudent, which are tenets of most faith communities, we don't want to have to respond. And I, I you know, oftentimes when you see a multi-agency effort, it is usually reactive to some kind of crises. And I think the Portland community can and should salute the law enforcement community because they're working proactively uh, to prepare and to try to throw art any kinds of threats, and that's kind of different. Usually when these guys stand and have a news conference, it's in response to a tragedy that's already happened. This is about preventing a tragedy from happening to start with. So, and, and I've seen some of the training. The truth of the matter is that Houses of Worship will be able to use this not only with regard to active shooters, but other incidents that may occur in their House of Worship, other mental health disturbances, for example. <coughs> Excuse me are some of the things that, that they can, uh, can look forward to receiving. I do want to make mention of this. Um, th there is limited room, so we don't want entire congregations to come. But we do want the senior faith leaders and the heads of their uh, security teams to, to be there. And we are thankful to you guys for assisting us in making sure that the Portland community knows that this training is happening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. If there are questions afterwards, we can, a few of us are able to stick around and answer those. Um, I've provided some flyers and we also have those available in PDF if you would like us to email them. But I appreciate everyone's attention today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.